Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB specialist, mobile application tester. We are in chapter one and done with all the tutorials of this chapter. Now we will be moving into the sample questions of this chapter. But before that, we'll be also talking about the rules and regulation of this particular chapter and exam distribution, uh, the number of questions being distributed in this particular chapter. In order to understand the sample question pattern here, which basically talks about the number of questions, the K level, which you will be expected from uh, this chapter to be answered during the examination. So the chapter one consists of eight questions or eight points from here, which is again like, you know, you have eight questions put together and uh, there will be few questions uh, which we'll be having. So total number of eight questions where K1 is one, K2 is 6 and K3 is 1, where the K3 question will come from 1.6.1 and most of the questions will be at K2 and hardly a question on the terminology right at the K1 level from the first uh, 1.3. So being aware of like again the most of the topics which we'll be covering here will be targeted from K2 but one topic is crucial that 1.6.1 is going to have a K3 level question as well. So put together eight questions and possible number of points are also eight as we have equal distribution of number of marks to all the 40 questions and total possible marks are 40 as well. But again, highlighting that in the very first chapter that you may expect few questions like two or three questions which will be uh, with multiple choices. So you may be asked to select two options for that question. Looking at the very first question here, which says uh, your team is developing a free user application that collects publicly available news from your user selected resources so that the user has a single place to read all the news from his or her favorite sources. Based on this information, which of the following business model is most appropriate? Now, of course, you need to recall the types of apps which you generally build in mobile testing world and need to recall and understand that okay how is this going to help me to determine whether it's a freemium whether it's a paid one or like you know paid application or advertisement or transaction bait and recalling the definition would certainly help you to answer this question and make you understand that okay this belongs somewhere here so when it comes to the option A, when we say it is freemium application, no, freemium applications does not apply here as uh, it, it does not include any of the paid features they have discussed in the scenario. Freemium basically means that by default it is free, but there can be uh, some of the options inside that which allows you to make payment for it. But they have not discussed anything as such in the scenario. So this is not a freemium as the scenario does not include any hint uh, towards the additional paid features. Coming up to the B, which says, is it an advertisement-based application? Yes, it could be, as the data is shown publicly, which is available, and thus it is unlikely the user will pay to read the data in the app. However, the user is used to seeing advertisement in new sites, which uh, the app makes money from. But you will not be charged for that. So yes, it could be a, a best example of advertisement-based application where we don't charge you to read the data. So C is again invalid paid application as we don't have any paid options here. The app is free to use and transaction based application. So again, nobody has discussed about any sort of transaction to be made here. It's not a payment app or it's not an app which makes uh, the transaction. So putting up all together, the right answer is B, advertisement based application as it is a completely free app and can definitely have advertisements over this to be making money from. Moving into the next question, the question number two, your team develops an iOS app that is used to register users, their email addresses and uh, street addresses. The data is transferred to a server and provides registered users with sample of physical products shipped via normal mail, which is postal mail or courier services. Which two of the following are the most appropriate architectural decision to consider for this app? Now, number one thing, first of all, you need to understand here that they are asking you to select two options. So please be careful. Whenever you see more than four options, you have to select multiple and you have to be sure about such things. Second, 
what scenario are they talking about? They're collecting some information, then based on that, the server provides register user uh, a kind of physical product sample. So what kind of architecture we can look for with you? Uh, so we have few options here, like always connected, native app, store and forward, cellular data, web app. So when we talk about the architectural decisions, we need to recall again our learning from there, what, how exactly does this go? So when it comes to the first option, always connected. Always connected is really not necessary here because user can be just connected when they are in, inputting their information. So since user is able to always work offline on such apps and the samples are sent via about physical shipping addresses. So probably you really don't have to be connected all the time. And a delay between the registration and arrival of the sample is present anyways. That means, you know, uh, the one, the point you register and then you take some time, then the product is shipped to you. So this could not be the right option to say that your app must be always connected as an architecture. Coming to the B, uh, native app as it is uh, an appropriate option here since it is iOS and allows users to work offline. Uh, they have also mentioned that you're building an iOS app where iOS definitely allows you to work offline. So it could be a definitely, a, uh, you know, a, the native app which is installed on the device itself. And coming to the C, it says store and forward. Yes, of course, because the data is being stored initially when you register and then further it is forwarded to server for taking necessary actions. So forward model basically allows the user to register even when or he or she is uh, unavailable on internet or offline while doing so. So you can just pull it up and mark yourself as register there. And later the, you know, whenever you sync up, whenever you connect with internet, it will just, uh, throw that request and place that registration into the database. So that could be another possibility. Let's look at D. It says cellular data. Uh, cellular data is not the most important consideration since the user is able to work offline. So even if you have a Wi-Fi or cellular data, it doesn't really make sense here. So as far as you're able to work offline, you can be at any particular place without any sort of connectivity with internet and you can still work on it. Moving up to E, it says web app. Uh, again, web app will require constant connectivity to the operator as per the uh, architecture of it. So as you can see, again, the scenario says you can work offline. You really don't need uh, any uh, sort of, you know, web app to be developed for such thing. It could, anyways, when you opted for native, you know that it could not be web app or hybrid. So you can opt it out. So putting up all together, the right answer here is B, a native app, and C, store and forward, considering the scenario given to you, will be the right answer. Looking forward to the next one, which is three, a company has decided to use crowd testing. Which of the following risk is mitigated by this decision? Which is completely from the last topic which we discussed uh, before closing on this, and we are very straightforward on this question. Crowd testing, what is the risk we may have? Uh, oh, sorry, what type of risk you can actually mitigate using this? So option A, non-availability of important stakeholders during development. Now, again, uh, this is a project risk, right? You know, when you talk about the product risk, you generally talk about the end products, uh, quality characteristics. And when you talk about the project risk, it is related to the process which you generally perform in order to create the end product. So when important stakeholders are not available during development phase, it is a project risk, not a product risk. Coming to the second one, B, cost, cost of supporting multiple platforms. Uh, again, as crowd testing has no impact on maintenance cost for platform, so this cost cannot be considered or cannot be used as a step to be mitigated through the crowd testing because a lot of other people will be involved in such executions and they will be taking care of it. Coming to the C, non-availability of important devices during the testing, yes. Though you invite a big crowd, a lot of people join you for crowd testing, but still none of them have that specific device which you were looking forward to uh, test your product in that or test your app in that. So yes, that could be as the crowd has a lot of different devices. Sometime it might be possible that they may not have that specific one which you still need it. Uh, still look at the D, good reviews in platforms, providers, app store. I think uh, as good review are basically not considered as a risk. If they provide a good feedback, it's always a good thing to have about the app and it cannot be considered as a risk. So that is again, not something which can be mitigated or 
as an option of mitigation. So putting it all together, the right answer here is C, non-availability of important devices during testing could be a constraint and will be mitigated by crowd testing. Okay, by conducting crowd testing, you can invite a number of people and people will have different devices. Then you can definitely fulfill all the needs of various types of devices. So that was all about talking on the sample questions of chapter one. Hope you had a good understanding of what type of questions can be expected during the examination and prepare well for it. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.